This might be the highest power to weight ratio of any aircraft I've ever flown. And I'm going to look left for going off. Yeah, yeah, you can still look left. You just remember to kick right. Seriously? Yeah, and kick here. It's starting to go. <laughs> so the Model 12, it was Curtis Pitts's like last design, but he never actually saw it built. This has a couple of modifications to it that make it probably the highest horsepower Model 12 that exists today anywhere, I would say. They dynoed it at 485 horsepower. And what does this thing weigh? Uh, like sitting here right now, it's about 1,800 pounds. <laughs> but yeah, you're gonna be flying it from the back seat and doing all the hard work. Welcome to the Model 12. <laughs> I'll be learning to land it as well as manage potential and kinetic energy in this thing. And that's what that airplane is good at teaching, is exactly that. I have all this massive amounts of thrust and energy stored up in that engine and that prop. What do I want to do with it? Yeah, that's definitely full circle, right? Where it all started. <laughs> I, uh, I still cringe at how much I didn't know watching that video. This one from 2015 was the first sponsored episode which allowed for a major production value upgrade. We're gonna go ahead and do a clearing turn once we break into the aerobatic box. Okay. And we're gonna burn off our wing tanks for the first five, 10 minutes of the flight. So this one had nothing to do with navigating or iPads, but ForeFlight understood what I was doing, trying to create some pretty cool content. And several other major aviation companies have come on board since, which I'm proud to be working with, keeping the production pipeline sustainable, literally creating hundreds of episodes over the past eight years. And it's really cool to see how far Jared has come in that time. Flying weird airplanes, like I knew there was something there that didn't exist maybe. And I had a way to get a bunch of cool airplanes together and have a bunch of people fly it. So Gambit is really uh, a flight school that anybody can fly like uncommon airplanes, weird airplanes. So I'm happy to be finally back out working with Jared again. And on top of my usual disclaimer, I wanna to add to this one that this is a non-revenue flight. The Model 12 is a new toy in his fleet, and I just wanted to help promote that this will soon be available for anybody on top of all the other stuff that he flies here. And we also worked with the T6 because I do have access to a Harvard Mark IV at home. I'm not flying aerobatics in that thing yet, so I did a whole bunch of work with Jared that's gonna be its own episode about flying aerobatics. Clear prop. And how to get out of dangerous positions you might find yourself in in botched maneuvers in a T6. But for now, this one's about the Model 12, so let's get into it. Master on. But it's a cool engine. It, it starts with air. It doesn't have an electric starter. So air is at 66? Okay, so we got 660 PSI, that's good. That'll okay. give you like four attempts. This is where the air is, and this is, I'll have you turn this on before you get in. But there's the uh, air bottle. Uh -huh. It's kept at like 800 PSI. And there's an engine-driven air compressor that as we fly, it fills that tank back up. So you have an indication in the cockpit of how much air is in that tank. And so you need to watch how much air is building up. We don't want it to get over 800 PSI. If it does, it'll, it'll blow off the excess air. Okay. It just makes a very, very loud noise. It's to scare the hell out of you. So you leave it off just because why? It could leak out. Gotcha. And, and that's the only way we can start it. So if that tank is empty, it can't no. start. And really, it's probably sitting at like 600 PSI right now. If you failed the first start, failed the second start, probably failed up to four starts, it's done, out of air. You gotta fill it back up with like a scuba tank full of compressed air. Right. Just, just to fill up an 800 PSI bottle, yeah. you can't fill it up with shop air. Okay. Since it's fuel injected, it's really not that bad. Okay, on your right hand side, let's go ahead and turn the uh, oil valve on. So that black handle. All the way forward? All the way forward, yep. Yep. Go ahead and get the mixture full rich. Full rich. Throttle, put it at like the E. Yep, it's there. And then go ahead and turn the avionics on. Avionics on. Cool. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna be okay. Copy. Yep, gotcha. All right. Okay, so now you're gonna prime it. So you're gonna hit the boost pump on. Just give it like two or three seconds and then hold the primer up for about four seconds. Hey, boost pump coming on. Yep. Primer. Okay, primer off. And boost pump off. Okay, your right hand on the starter. And then starter. Left fingers below the mags, ready to push them up. Yep. I've got your stick for you. Don't worry about that. Yeah, cause I can't even pinch it with my legs. Yep, you're all good. How do you, how do, you do that when you're solo? Uh, you just don't. Okay. Yep, just make sure it doesn't go running away on you. So it's not gonna fire on the first blade, it's gonna pull through and you're gonna hear the air system pressurizing the cylinders with compressed air to move the blade. 
whenever it starts, mags to both, but you do not have to come off that fast. Remember, that's just air. So if the engine's running, you just hold that up right, and right. nothing bad's gonna happen. Even in the middle of doing aerobatics, you just press it up and nothing's gonna happen. Right. So don't- Don't worry about it like a starter. Yeah, hold that up a lot longer than you think. Even when the engine's running, just start it. It starts to pop off, mags to both real fast and just hold the starter up for a little while. Until the worst case scenario right. is you come off this early, you fail to start and then you run out of air. Exactly. Okay, so you're gonna hold the starter. Yep. Once it fires, put the mags on. Yep. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna not let go of the starter. Yep. Clear prop. Just hold it. It's cold. Hold it. Max. Hold it. Okay, now you can let go of the starter. Yep, we're good. Good. Nice. And as it starts to fire, as soon as you start hearing it light off, mags to both and just hold the starter up. And how does it fire with the mags off? When you're holding the starter, it's it has a shower of sparks unit. All right, so let's see how much air we use. We got 470 psi. But you can go ahead and turn the uh, compressor on. Make make very sure it's the comp and not the oil scav. Make sure you're turning the compressor on, and then you should get a yellow pumping light. I got a yellow light pumping. Cool. Excellent. Sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, it's awesome. That whining is that the, uh, That's super the supercharger? Yep. Yeah, that is very cool. At this point. We just gotta let it warm up. It's gonna take a little while. We got a lot of oil. Yep. And it's cold out. The more important part of this airplane is the motor. That's the major difference. It's got a Russian, it's a Videnia of M14P. Fuel injected, these engines kind of start carbureted. Then you can modify them to be fuel injected. The next thing is just we'll walk around, make sure the mags are off, and I'm gonna have you pull the prop through. So those are both off. It's a minimum of 19 blades. You're gonna be sweating by the time you're done. Down. Yeah. Well, and this is this is way higher compression. <laughs> obviously, you're you're checking for a hydraulic lock. Right. That's obviously. Because if you don't, you could break something. Yeah. So oil pooling up in the bottom cylinders, and you already know this from the T6 stuff, and it's the same same exact thing here. Even if it's a Russian radial, oil can pool up into those bottom cylinders, and you you can't compress oil, so connecting rods start to bend. That's all we're doing is making sure that the bottom cylinders are clear of oil. Since it's a radial, and you're familiar with that, but these Russian radials are, are totally bulletproof. But like maybe your T6 has like this clean kit on it. Mm -hmm. So it drains oil out before it reaches the cylinders. So we make sure that that's left open and that's why we got a oil can down there. And if you ran into a hydraulic lock, it would feel like... It would either be just totally stuck. You'd put your whole body weight into it and it wouldn't move or it'd be a lot tighter than what it is right there. Um, and it may not, you know, if you actually have a hydraulic lock, you may hit the starter and it just, bam, it would seize, or it could continue running for 10 hours and then catastrophically fail while you're flying. Because something so, bent. Because something bent, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you can't see it very well, but like even on the sides, the prop arc is just hilarious. Oh, I can see it. It's the biggest thing ever. What is the diameter on it? 113 inches. Wow. That's composite, is it? Or? It's composite, yeah, with a wood core. It's the biggest prop MT makes. It's in its special order. Like they don't just have these sitting around. You have to special order it. I think it's 113 inch diameter. And uh, for that reason, to accommodate that prop, they take these landing gear legs and extend the landing gear legs out too. So that is just one gigantic piece of spring steel, massive piece of spring steel. So with that, it's super easy to land because it has so much flex to it. But with the flex, I mean, you see how close yeah. the blade is to the ground just sitting here in the three-point attitude that if you were to wheel land it it's going to come down considerably lower than that and if you touch down and has like a little hard and it has some spring in the gear you're you're hitting that thing on the ground so you don't want to do that every takeoff and every landing is done three-point attitude only so the the goal is to not drag the tail on the ground it's stick neutral and just let the airplane fly off at that point and the landing, I mean, you'll see, and you're used to not seeing anything while you're flying, but it feels like you're pointing at the stars, dude. It's it's way nose high. Okay, well, let's just, because we're killing time, let's just talk through the takeoff. So I'm, just, I'm gonna be smooth with the power through the firewall. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna give it what it needs. I don't really think about right rudder like a lot of students do. Exactly. This is just the opposite, because it, it oh, rotates correct, the way, yeah. but it's gonna, um, it's gonna be left rudder, but don't I'm even not, think about it. I just correct, I don't think about it. Okay, mixture full rich again. Full rich. Boost pump on. Final is clear. Air's coming up nicely. We're at 630 PSI. 
Okay, so I'm not gonna go past neutral with the stick when I add power. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> All right, nice and straight. Just neutral stick right now is fine. Right there? Yep, and then uh, let's start working up to full power. <laughs> Everything it's got, there you go. <laughs> and it's flying. Oh my God. Keep the nose up, keep the nose up. Oh yeah, okay. More up. Holy shit! There is nothing That's right about right there. Uh, uh, That's good. That's ridiculous. Climbing like crazy. Alright, let's drop it down to uh, about 100 miles an hour. Okay, let's come back to, uh, I don't know, 28 inches of manifold pressure. Right now we're at 33.7. The only thing that I would note, like if you were going to train to have your own Model 12, I just get the nose up a little more. Get away from the thing that's going to kill you, the ground. Put it at 70 miles an hour and just climb away at 70. I know it's like, yeah. you're just kind of all over the place trying to find where 70 is. <clears throat> and that's okay, but just keep working on 70. Just yeah. off the ground, because it's off the ground instantly, 70. When you'd be primed to like hammer the nose down if you did. Yeah, you, know. you have, I mean, all that power at your left hand, you, you want to use that in the takeoff roll just to get away from everything. That's, that's all. Use that energy that the airplane's making to get as high as you can. Right. And there's two trains of thought too. I, I, I know you know about this, but you can either have kinetic energy or potential energy. You can take a Model 12 and climb out at 150 miles an hour and have tons of kinetic energy. Um, engine quits maybe, sure. You can maybe pitch up real fast to gain a whole bunch of altitude. There's a lot of moving parts at that point. Or would you rather take all of the thrust the airplane's making, climb out and have a ton of potential energy at the top now you're at two, you know, it makes 2,000 feet. It's 1,000 feet of a pattern altitude in yeah, seconds. Oh yeah, Would you rather have all that potential energy stored up? Now you can see everything where the difference is you just push to get light in the seat. Or would you rather have a bunch of kinetic energy low down? I would rather have the potential energy. Coming way back here. Oh yeah, it comes way back. Okay, and then RPM. Let's bring it down to 1860. You bring the nose down a little bit more. It's gonna be a bit of like a, a cruise climb setting. Okay, coming back for 1860. Yeah, the prop is way back to get there, eh? So it feels a little lumpy right now, but that's normal. Yeah, keep it coming back. You turn the boost pump off. Boost pump off. Okay, so can you take it? I'll calibrate this thing and then yep. forget about the iPad. Yep, I got the airplane. We're cruising for a minute to get to where we're going anyway, right? Yeah, we are. All right, so we're giving away one of these. Take up Sentry Plus. So ATC kind of stepped all over me attempting to do the talk through of the giveaway and I didn't do a second take. But anyway, it's the last call because there's only a few days left on this. It's a really solid backup AHARS unit as well as a CO monitor. I actually tested and calibrated it in the hotel room with ForeFlight there. That was pretty cool. That's about level flight right there. Yeah. Okay, so that is calibrated. So visit flightchops.com slash contest to win about $2,000 worth of aviation gear. The tail has gap seals in it. So we spray a little silicone there every once in a while just to make it so it's not so sticky. Because the thing goes a lot faster than a regular pit. Yeah, I mean, in cruise, at cruise power setting, which is way low, it's 160, 170 miles an hour. So when you're full wide open, like doing acro, in straight and level, it's, it, it's getting close to V&E and just straight and level. What is V&E? 240, 240 miles an hour off the top of my head. All right, my friend. You want to do some acro? Yeah, let's do some acro before I get too sad. Go ahead and roll it. Just bring the nose up a little bit and roll it left to right. Yeah, much better. And we got tons of room here. It's blue sky ahead of us. You want to do a loop? Okay, sure. Let's do it. Just got give plenty it. of speed. Just start pulling a little bit. All right, here we go. Go ahead. There's Mother Earth. You see how fast it picks up speed? Look at, look at his speed. <laughs> what I get to? Uh, I mean, down from zero all the way up to 160 in a minute. Yeah. Seconds. And then, Steve, go ahead and turn the air compressor off. Uh, air compressor off. Cool. All right, go ahead and turn this around. Uh, let's see, half cubit? There. Feel free. There we go. Ready when you are. Plenty of altitude. Oh, a little stall there. That's kind of too much or I see slow. That was just you pulling a little too much, that's all. So what, what's interesting is I'm used to pulling like four G's. Yeah, you're just kind of being a little heavy handed. It's just, you know, basically fingertip flying. Okay, so uh, it's definitely not like the X-Door or even the RV. Right, right. Yeah, we really have to pull the RV. 
So as soon as you start pulling and you start loading up, yeah, it has tons of thrust. It'll get you through anything that you need it to get you through. But the second you're starting to run low on energy and you have a little too much pull, it, it'll just do the accelerated stall thing like any other airplane would. Yeah, so what I didn't expect was entering the loop and then recovering from the loop. I was like, I'm not feeling any G on this recovery. Not much. Yeah, it's not I'm, much. I'm used to like feeling lots of G. I mean, you're doing 160, 180 by the time you're level again. From being upside down to level again, it went from zero to 180. So what you're feeling is just mostly acceleration, not G. At the back end here, you're still only pulling like one and a half. But the airplane is just pulling you around so fast that it's over instantaneously. Right. So it's not pulling much G, it's just thrusting you around the loop. And how long should I count vertical for? Uh, I'll tell you when to kick. Okay, here we go. You want to do it with a smoke on? Yeah, let's do smoke on. So smoke's over on your left hand side there. Uh, arm is up and on. Cool. Okay, let's, here we go. Let's do it. And I'm going to look left for going up. Yeah, yeah, you can still look left. You just remember to kick right. Okay. And to go. <laughs> That's so fun to be able to see the smoke. <laughs> and pull it out of the dive. And yeah, then smoke off. Smoke off. It smells good. <laughs> yeah. I love that smell. That's so fun, man. It's hard to get the precision down to just doing two or three hammerheads. The more you do it, the, the better you get at it. But you see, it kind of just wants to go up on its own. It has yeah. so much power. It's it just it's forever. It'll sit there forever. What do you think, dude? Yeah, so I just need to fly it a little differently than I expected. Yeah. yeah. I expected to be pulling 4G. Sure. Sure. Okay, cool, man. So we're just below three quarters of gas. Do you want to go do some landing? Yeah, let's do it. So the landing, just like we talked about, it's three point only. Just, you got a long, long, long runway. I don't care if you use the whole entire thing. Just fly down the runway like you know how to fly an airplane. Just sort of establish the three point attitude. And you're going to, you're just going to sort of meter your descent rate with power. Okay. And so you, you sort of like feather the airplane into the ground just with power. And yeah, we're not going to flip it or do anything that'll uh, induce any kind of big... Uh, not unless forward. you need it. Forage, you can turn the boost pump back on. Boost pump on. 2400 RPM? 2400 RPM, yep. Good. Then you can push the power up a little bit more too. Yeah, I'll get my altitude fixed. Lost yep. some altitude while I was doing yep. that. And now the, the throttle is just an energy management tool. I don't I don't want you to think about a power setting. Yep. If you want to go faster, give it more power. Yeah, I guess with that big disc out there with that prop with that RPM you got a lot of drag, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait yeah, wait till you pull the power back to idle. It's like a parachute comes up. Right traffic on the go, experimental two delta Romeo. Yeah, we're 150 here. Yeah, it'll slow down very, very fast. Okay. So a little bit more pull. A little bit more pull. That'll help us slow down. Yeah. And and really, as you start to, to manage the throttle, you're going to feel how much drag this prop has. So keeping this amount of energy on it right now is perfect. A little more nose up. And you're going to leave the prop where, you're, where you have it. You're not going to push it full forward. A little sure. more nose up. Your speed's good, your profile's good. Here's where the runway goes away. A little more nose up. You're on the left side of the runway. So <laughs> one, uh, make that clock good. A little bit of power. Add a little bit of power. Starting to come back to idle. Yep. You got it, dude. A little more nose up. Idle. There you go. Stick all the way in the gut. Red one, and right left down one, two, seven. Full forward. Bring the prop full forward now. Prop full forward. And nice and straight. You're good. Hammer it. <laughs> Keep the nose up. Like, you know, you're nearly doing 120 miles an hour in the climb. That's nuts. Hey, nicely done. Well, thanks, man. I don't know how much you had to help on the rudder there, but I really... Uh, dude, I didn't touch anything. Are you serious? Yeah. Because I had to get aggressive there to save it for a no, second. Yeah, it was just fine. <laughs> okay. I don't think you did anything inherently wrong like the first landing i'll just and i'm gonna maybe talk out of order but your first landing is the only time you brought something up where you're like oh, i don't know if you were helping me along there but the whole flight i didn't touch anything i'm just kind of sitting there watching you do it all and making sure you're within like a, an, a safety envelope then i'll step in if it's like getting too close to the edge but dude it was fine the whole time it was fine the, yeah, the that whole first time. Landing, it, it kind of did some stuff, but yeah. I, I, well, I, I, I saw you with your feet making sure it's going straight. It's just your tailwheel skill set sort of taking over there because you automatically know what to do. Yeah. But it, the airplane didn't do anything weird that you haven't probably seen already, especially in something like a T6. Two delta make sure approach two seven and clear the option one two five zero six. Clear the option two seven experimental field Romeo short approach. All right, let's get in a little tighter. 
looking very good. He wants us to make a short approach. I think he could do it. I'll stay uncut with the head cam on this one and keep in mind that it's a fair bit higher than my eyes. A little less power, a little more pull. That's good. I'll right, just level it out here for just a second. Keep the nose coming up, keep it turning. Keep well, we the timing, clear away. A little more pull. A little more pull, good. Now a little less power, I just kind of feather it into the ground. That's good. Just keep flying it. Get a little bit of left point down. A little bit of left point down. Good. Good. Stick in the gut. Stick in the gut. Prop. Full forward. Go, go, go. <laughs> awesome. Very cool, man. Okay, for the last one, you want to just show me a good one? Dude, you're already doing good ones. <laughs> you got it. Dude. You're better about the second one. Doing, I don't want to work hard today. You're doing the last one. All right. And just for for giggles, push the prop all the way forward. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we're low. Just like that. Yeah, look at good. Profile's good. Just bring the nose up a little bit more. More nose up. More nose up. More nose up. More. Holy. Yeah. Okay. More. 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 There you go. Good. Stick in the gut. Ah, good job. Then you can transition the brakes just a little bit. We could probably make Alpha 3. So there's definitely more to come flying with Jared. But you gotta admit, with that landing gear, yeah, it, it, dude, it makes it easy. But with it having a gigantic piece of spring steel there. And it's pretty amazing that Jared has it worked out that you can solo rent that extra 330. On top of the next episode featuring Flying the T6 with Jared, I've actually got the raw version of the briefings for the Model 12 available as a Patreon supporter exclusive. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. If we have to jump out of the airplane, it's the kind of standard brief, uh, is I'll say bail out, bail out, bail out three times at the top of my lungs. We both have a way to open the canopy and I'll show you it when you get in, like how you close it and how you open it. That's it. It. Questions, comments, concerns? About bailing? No. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs>